Hi everybody, this is BB Davis. Welcome to BB Love Sports with Sports and Gaming. It's the exquisite fusion. What's up squad? Tyler squad, you're the best squad in the world. Happy Independence Week. That's what's happening right here. Now I know a lot of people have gone back to their destinations and some people are still rocking it out, okay? And that's all good. As for me, I started celebrating last week through the weekend and Sunday, it all went down with family and friends, and then I'm still celebrating with my top hat. All right, so I hope that your fourth was great and all of that. Now, if you've been checking out my social media on BB Love Sports on Instagram, I did talk about the fourth. Some people have their feelings about that, especially in the world of people of color. But here's what I say about everything, you know, with the big, big ups with Juneteenth and all that. We really have to know our history and you feel however you want to feel, okay, about the fourth. As for me, my background roots, our family, my family, we got our emancipations like even before the emancipation year and depending on where you were born, the state, as well as sometimes the city, you have a different date than Juneteenth. For my family, it is Feb-teenth, March-teenth, May-teenth, okay? So that's when the emancipation. As for the fourth, I always say I come from resiliency. We all do. If you're still here, then you came from a family of resiliency, and that's how I look at it. The fourth I look at as being independent from Britain. Okay, declaring our independence. Also, I am of Native American descent, so I celebrate my resiliency. I am my ancestors' wildest dreams and not their nightmares. So that's how I look at everything, and people just have to look at it how they want to look at it. But never let anyone shame you from rocking out the country that you are in. And I'm happy to be in this country. I'm not happy with things that happen in this country. And I've always been conscious. So I wanted to just share that here on this platform. As I said in more great detail on my social media platform. All right. So check it out. We got a lot of sport news here. So welcome to this segment, everybody. I'm feeling really, really good. Y'all see my lips? I got the blue and the red. Okay. And then I did my eye work. Okay, just trying to keep it all cool. I see my strawberries on my cheeks are out today, so that's cool. All right, so in the news here, ladies, ladies, ladies. The ladies have been in the news for sports. We've been in the news for good, and we've been in the news for, uh, okay, that's my uh, Lucia Ball impersonation that didn't go quite right there. Uh, but anyway, Rachel Nichols, okay. Now, Rachel Nichols is a great journalist. She represents well through the years, but through everything, we're in the age of information and the digital age, so you can have a lot of controversy, which is not good if that is, ooh, like bad controversy, you know? So here's what happened, and here's the breaking news here. She will not, Rachel Nichols, be doing the sideline reporting for the NBA Finals after comments of Maria Taylor. So, let's talk about this. And see, these are the things within the country that we love that can cause people to feel certain kind of ways. So now, Nichols is the host of ESPN's The Jump. And uh, she will return for that but here's what she had to say and we're gonna get to it on this particular call that the New York Times highlighted um, it was a back and forth I could say a lot of uh, unrest if you want to say with the phone conversation that happened uh, in July 2020 and uh, it was they said unintentionally Record it uh, in the company's control room. 
She was not happy about Taylor being selected to be hosting the 2020 NBA Finals coverage. Um, now, here's what she had to say. And this is the quote. Guess what? That would clear the way for, for Maria to do the hosting full time. I wish Maria Taylor all the success in the world. She covers football, she covers basketball. If you need to give her more things to do because you are feeling pressure about your crappy long time record on diversity, which by the way, I know personally from the female side of it, like go for it, just find it somewhere else. You're not going to find it from me or taking my thing away. So with those revelations and I would have to say out here at the lake sunny disposition that didn't sound good so then she goes on to say on Monday that she was deeply sorry and she was uh, it was just disappointing so here's a quote so the first thing they teach you in journalism school is don't be the story and I don't plan to break that rule today or distract from a fantastic finals, but I also don't want to let this moment pass without saying how much I respect, how much I value our colleagues here at ESPN. How deeply, deeply sorry I am for disappointing those I hurt, particularly Maria Taylor and how grateful I am to be a part of this outstanding team. Taylor, no comment as of yet. So with issuing this, apology I mean sometimes entitlement can happen to the best of us but when you are in journalism and when you know the strides that women have yet to make in sports period and for people of color the strides of making it into all aspects we're going to focus here on sports those are disparaging comments no one feels good if they feel like their gig is being taken away or a shine or anything like that but there's room for everyone and I think that's what is so disappointing to me but it's not shocking not just for Rachel Nichols but for anyone else because it is the yin that goes with the yang uh, is competitive out here but for someone who has presence for a long time who has built up their credibility in sports who have had exclusives and all of that what is the threat when you have most likely been someone that people look up to or say they're in my list for breaking glass ceilings and being there representing but then when you hear this disparaging comments talking about uh, you all are doing this just for race that is so disappointing it definitely needs to be diversity but diversity for those who actually deserve it not giving someone a chance just because of the color of their exclusive beautiful hue but giving them a chance because they are good at what they do and they are in the alignment of diversity so yeah, I thought that was disappointing, but I thought that it was only right for them to go ahead and do that. No one is above our uh, reproach. And even though you may have the years and the experience and all of that, nobody is irreplaceable. And when you speak like that, it's hard for someone to say if that's a genuine apology or not. That's just my POV because, you know, what proceeded out of your mouth comes from your heart and your head and you know it it just does not look good so you know we definitely as women no matter what our beautiful hue is we need to definitely tighten up with each other and support each other and if you're not feeling that person's coverage I mean still um, it's called pay it forward and it's called having the dignity to rise above the occasions if somebody wants to go with someone else you know okay yeah, very disappointing there. All right, so then we are going to move from that. And I'm going to talk about the uh, NFL news. 
Now, it's a lot going on. We're getting closer and closer to football season. And I'm so excited about everything. I mean, um, it's so much happening out here um, in football. But, of course, all eyes right now, and we're live here, all eyes right now is on talking about Aaron Rodgers. Um, he's just been the focal point, but you know, it's been more stuff happening in the news, but just wanted to talk about that. Now we're here at mental health um, with all the speculations that has been happening over the months about the dissatisfaction of Aaron Rodgers, QB for the Packers and that he doesn't want to come back and all of that. And I mean, a lot of people are just really over it. Okay. And myself as a sportcaster, on the professional it's just like if someone doesn't want to be there then don't let them be there but if you're talking about contractual and money and all of that hey what are you gonna do it is um, a lot of tension and build up because it affects these decisions the team you know and I'm sure that not just the fans but the team is over it Sportcast is over it, and even Aaron Rodgers is over it. But he is thankful for the opportunity to work on his mental health. So here we go. And a lot of people are going to be saying there are abusing, a lot of people are abusing the mental health card and all that. But what do we know about people's true mental health? But this is what's the headlines. Um, wants to work on the mental health on the off season. I am all about the holistic nature of having good mental health because if you're not in a good mental space, you're not going to be good for the team, you're not going to be good for the season of the franchise and all of that. So, um, Aaron Rodgers, he spoke at length a lot about what the future would be for him. And, um, you know, this is his 17th year with the Packers and he just wants to focus on his mental health and all of that so people are up in arms some people are just like yeah right um but here's what i say about everything with his comments he's saying i'm very thankful for the opportunity to work on my mental health i haven't dealt with bouts of depression or anything that i think for whatever reason are okay to talk about if you're talking about mental health i've just really been trying to think about what puts me in the best frame of mind what habits can I form that allow me to feel most in my body, most present and happiest? And that's what I've been doing. Well, while he's been doing that, you know, it's been a guess of will he stay? Will he go? Will he retire? But last season was a definitive season for everyone in sports sportcasters is because we had to deal with COVID and how we would adjust to the new normal and, and keeping ourselves safe. And with the new variant of COVID that's coming and with people who's going to be vaccinated, uh, have yet to be vaccinated, already vaccinated, have decided they are not taking the vaccine, we still are dealing with COVID. Last year for the preseason, we did not have that so no one could really get those sea legs going until the regular season, which I thought it was a bravado for everyone dealing with the circumstances. But to be clear, everybody, to really be clear here, I feel when you have backup quarterbacks, when you are playing in the regular seasons, you need to give them a chance to go and play and see what it feels like to be, not just in preseason, but in a real game. And that didn't happen with Jordan Love. And that happens a lot of times with other backup quarterbacks until they're needed in the clinches. There were plenty of times where Aaron Rodgers is the leader and the coaches or anybody to make that move, but especially the leader, what they consider the leader, the quarterback, to say, hey, we're gonna let him play um, if we're winning and we're up, give him a chance to go out there and let's see what he does. And it's not all about being the selfishness. So it's hard to put any blame on love who, just like anybody else, they work hard to get where they 
want to get and to live their dreams of playing in the NFL. So I am down with Jordan Love um, seeing what he can do for the season coming up. And hopefully the football club will take into account that we need to get the backup quarterbacks on the field regularly. That way no one will ever think that they are irreplaceable. No one will ever think that you cannot do without them. And I'm not saying this about Rodgers, but I'm just saying that no one should ever feel like someone else can't come and live out their dreams because everyone who's already living their dreams in the NFL, okay, should always remember how it was before and what they want to do. So I just feel like, hey, if you're going to focus on your mental health, go ahead. And I wish the best to the Packers or to anyone else who may come up in those kind of situations because, um, you know, people need to do what they need to do for them. Now, moving on here before I'm out, Shakari Richardson with the whole smoking the green and not being able to participate in the Olympics. Well, you have to follow the rules. A lot of people brought up Armstrong, a lot of people brought up Michael Phelps, and I was just like, listen, when you know the rules, do what you need to do and follow the rules. It was the right call to make because you have others who will come after and others who are there now. You need to follow the rules. Everyone has rules when it comes to sports, when it comes to even sport casting. I mean, even when it comes to your regular nine to five. You have to follow the rules. So it is a learning lesson for her. I'm glad she did step it up to say what she needed to say. A lot of people, they were a champion for her. Let her run, let her run. But you got to follow the rules. And there are rules and regulations for everything. And if you get out here and be willy-nilly, then what's the point? Okay. In the NBA Finals, I know a lot of people were disappointed. But I thought all the teams did really, really good. It is so refreshing to see new teams in there. So, what we have is the Milwaukee Bucks and the Phoenix Suns, okay? So, this is how it's going to be going down. Game 2 goes down on Thursday at 9 p.m. Game 3 goes down Sunday at 8 p.m., Thursday 9 p.m., and Sunday 8 p.m. And then, on Wednesday, July 14th, it's going to be 9 p.m., game Four, game five, 9 p.m. on Saturday. So I'm excited. Who you got? I know some people are like, I don't have anybody because my team is not in it. But that's okay. And that's all right. <laughs> that is so okay. And that is so all right. Um, for those uh, who are wanting to see what's going to be happening with the Olympics, the Olympics are going to start on July 23rd, 2021, and then Sunday, August 8th. Also, Shark Week is coming, so a lot of people are going to be excited about that. Booyah! I know I am. I'm excited about Shark Week. Uh, if you missed on, um, I don't know if it was a&M or USA or TNT, I can't remember, but they did the backstory to the movie Jaws. And it was so good seeing Steven Spielberg sit down, Richard Dreyfuss and everyone just talking about such a phenomenal breakthrough movie that still impacts a lot of people. Like, I'm a beach babe, so when people go to the beach, you know, they be thinking about that Jaws. But it was so good seeing the backstory I'm a backstory type person. So it was good seeing the backstory to Jaws. And it was so good to, you know, get that intricate things of what was happening. And, you know, Richard Drivers was saying he didn't want to do the movie. And then he begged to do the movie because a previous movie didn't have him looking in the right thespian light that he wanted to be in. So I was just like, it was just top notch. Uh seeing the backstory and I think that's good you know especially for how old this movie has been around and how it impacted the culture of movie making and even until now so I just thought that was just really great so you can count on 
LinkedIn 21 magazine to be uploading my post and I will be live doing commentary also over on Twitter and doing more commentary right here on YouTube. But I thank you so much for locking in everybody. It's a beautiful, beautiful day out here on the lake and I am back to red as you can tell. Rock it out gingers! That's right. And um, I've just been having a really good time. For the fourth, eight good and also fireworks were on point and it is it was just good it was just a really good fourth and then i did get my nice little calls in from my special someones and i just thought that was cool it's always going to be thought of and um, even when you're having busy schedules um, with your friends family lover everything it's always good you know when you can check in with each other and you um you know, make those plans later to enjoy each other, you know, friends, family, lovers, and even mental health yourself, definitely. Because if you are not good with yourself, then how can you be good with any others? But it's always good to reach out to people. That way, um, you know that they know you care and they reach out to you and you know that they care. It's just so good it's so good so there will be more to come thanks for locking in you all have been so great and now i'm about to log off and i'm going to get me something cool to drink because it's actually in the 90s and i want to give love to the florida coast and everyone because of those storms coming up you know i'm a tampa floridian and so i want to give love to my family friends and just all of florida and everyone else that we will be impacted um with this storm that's coming and hopefully it will just kind of move and not do a lot of impact and we definitely show love still to those in the miami area and just for the world always good vibes all right everybody i'm so out so you stay locked in to more bb of sports with sports and gaming it's exclusive fusion and yes there will be some gaming talk absolutely because it goes down and the studio is still coming lots of good stuff on the way so make sure you stay tuned peace and love